Hey guys, welcome to um, Espen the Consultant. Uh, today I would like to uh, further discuss migrating from um, end to end VLAN structure for your um, campus enterprise network to a routed enterprise network with local VLANs. With local VLANs. Now, the drawing you see above here is my OSBF network design. And as you can see, this is our core uh, router one, or let's say core switch one is a collapse core, and that is core switch two, or router two collapse core. Now the interlink has the subnets 100, 100, 100, 0, slash 30, meaning 100, 100, 100, 1 will be interface first, not, not 100, uh, dot 100, dot 100, dot 2, will be interface first, not, not on router number 2. And then has different um, interlinks, uh, uplinks, or downlinks to the access layer, and they all have different subnets and loopback interfaces and areas. And areas. Now uh, let's try and design a new network. Um, and I'd like to do this from scratch with you. Uh, so don't get overwhelmed by all these amazing syntaxes over here. Um, it's doable and I'm going to explain to you how this is going to be done. Uh, so first and foremost, let's try and open a brand new, uh, and help me with this tireless thing, uh, new, um, I'll call it new uh, rooted OSBF campus network. All right, so um, the first thing we are going to consider are the areas, and I would like to specify my areas so. Uh, I want the core where the main chassis for routing and forwarding traffic uh, resides. I want to call it, uh, and it's going to be the backbone area. Uh, so it's going to be area zero. Uh, let's change the style a little bit, make it a little cleaner. Uh, let's fill it nicely with um, special color. And let's change that to one. Let's make that a dash. Let's apply that in the K. And that looks clean there. And let's sort of duplicate that and do our access layer. This is where normally your uh, your access devices might be. Um, and I could do a core an aggregation or distribution and then an access but I'm gonna do a collapse core because many enterprises use collapse core and they may not have um, a distribution so um, let me change this around a little bit change that to another color and that should do and the fill Let's change the fill up to that and dash and apply and okay. All right, so hopefully it's still looking okay for you where you are. So that's gonna be our core, that's gonna be access, um, and it's gonna be our collapse core. So let's try and level it nicely here. So I'll call it and uh, we can do distribution at all, but um, uh, because we have um, switches, which we, we can now do good um, layer three uh, routing and all. Uh, we can stick to a collapse core 
which would take care of the core distribution and then the access layer. So access layer. Okay. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to specify uh, my first. Let's change the symbol. Let's use the, let's use the oh no 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 uh, symbols library. Let's use the classic, and let's stick to one of the beautiful things that we're used to. Um, apply. Okay. Let's make sure that uh, it has the slots we need. So we so we got fast Ethernet. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that um, again. First, close that thing off. Duplicate this. Duplicate. There we go. And that's gonna be. So let's call this uh, core A. And let's call that. You guessed it. Core B. All right then, and um, for the purpose of the studies, why don't we um, stick to um, using one uh, one access layer? So once you, you understand how this is going to work, um, the resilience, redundancies, and all. You can now scale that up to um, further bits where um, you can have different access switches. So, this I'm going to call this access uh, um, 10 a Okay, let's just use as I say as building A, and we can do another one for building B. But let's change the name. Sorry, change the host symbol to look. Let's use the classic ones to look like a switch. And I'll explain to you how it works on Cisco switches and how it works on things like HP Pro Caps and Aruba chassis and other ones like Arista or any of those. I could go for multi-layer switch, but I just want um, a work group. Uh, one second, it's over there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. When you see it, tell me, please. And I uh, thank you. Here we go. Apply. And okay, so this is access layer, but this is access layer um, zone A. We're going to do another one for zone B, but I want to make it a little bit simpler so we can all design together. So, what you need first is let's connect them all up together. I would always use, and I know you don't see where the links are, so let's. Lower this layer. <laughs> Don't worry, it wasn't a trick. This is just how the layers are. So let's just lower this right whilst we are here. And O1 comes to O here. And this one's O1, which is goes to O1 there and you can see uh, 
Okay, so it's taking shape now. Always do your best to save this. Uh, try to make it clean. It's very essential that you start putting on your networking cap. Uh, you, from the beginning, understand the OSPF need important parameters, and I'm going to mention those now. Uh, so why don't you write one here? Loop back. Uh, loop back address. And let's make it a lot smaller. Let's right click, just edit, select font, make it smaller. Six, and let's see if we can use something else. I'm not sure. Do OK, apply. Let's change the font for all that too. Red. Because it's important, apply OK. So, look at address for Core A. Sorry, guys, struggling with this. Okay, look at address for Core B. We're going to use it to, de to decide who's going to be the uh, designated router or router and the, and then the backup designated router and look back here. All right, so why don't we make this one here the top boy? So we can go, for example, and that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do That ten, that ten, that ten. Um, that a hundred. Ten, that ten, that ten, that ninety nine. And this is gonna be a ten, that ten, that ten, and it's a. Let's start from ten. So that's building ten. And yeah, you guessed it. So the others are going to be building 20, building 30, building 40. Okay. So this is your first layer. Uh, your structure is getting to play. Okay. So you know you definitely need a loop back. You need your live interfaces for your link states. Um, but to do that, of course, we need to take care of our dressing. Um, but so you know, Let's link in here, and maybe it would be a good idea to take a picture of this. Uh. So, let's call it Rooted enterprise network. Okay. All right. So, on on Cisco uh, switches, layer three switches. What you do is this interface here, and let's enable the interfaces so they all have um, what they really look like. You would normally type. Uh, you go to interface and under the interface like interface for example fast not one you type the words no switch port and that automatically makes it a layer 3 you make sure IP routing or routing is enabled on that layer 3 switch and automatically your switch can now handle um, at allowed or applicable layer 3 routing protocols support and you can design your network in a much better and rooted way 
so um let's continue uh, this journey on the next video thanks for tuning in um please come back and let's carry on from where we are now so the next area um to look at will be addressing ip addressing and then we will look at static routing and then afterwards we enable your dynamic routes we will bring in a data center and we will do um, you know we perform a sort of test with um, auto resilience on dynamic routing and almost like failing over when things do happen or they happen uh, on the network and this guy needs to still get resources so we would look at that in the next video uh thanks for tuning in for now uh come back let's carry on with um, video number two of this uh rooted osvf campus network series thank you and see you on the other side